Welcome to Bible 180, dude, it's Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is a reminder of God's plan and protection from the insider's perspective of Moses. On the doorstep of the Promised Land, Moses not only recalls Israel's history, he teaches them what Israel should learn from it. In a variety of ways, he makes the point, worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. The Israelites are about to enter the Promised Land. The invasion is a reclamation project. It will require commitment and follow through will be paramount to the success of the mission. Moses reminds Israel, the blessings of the Promised Land and God's presence among them are unparalleled but if they don't follow his commands and follow through, it will all be for naught. Moses reminds them whenever they listen to Yahweh, things worked out. When they complained or strayed, things went poorly. Without Yahweh, they would never have escaped Egypt or the wilderness or the other kingdoms who they lands they wandered through. It would be fruitless to follow after other gods, not to mention downright disrespectful to their protecting and compassionate God who picked Abraham when he was a nobody. There's positive reinforcement. Follow the Lord your God and he will lead you safely into the land and bless your families, your crops, your defenses, and even your wealth and livelihood. If you forget the Lord and follow other gods, His favor will depart from you, and instead you'll be cursed. There are 53 verses of creative curses for those who disobey. The point is crystal clear. Obedience is vastly preferable to disobedience, not only for Yahweh, but also for Israel's own welfare. Why is Israel favored? Not because they've done anything good. Rather, the, is the nations driven out before them are being punished for their wickedness. Moses says, you've been wicked as well, so repent. It's only because I interceded on your behalf and only because of God's promises and faithfulness that you are saved. Moses wants to make sure the Israelites know how to go forward since he is about to die for the sins of the people. On the night of his death, the Lord relays a wonderful song to Mo through Moses. Yahweh describes how he longs for Israel to be his people and wants to bless them. He sings of his hurt at Israel's betrayal and future faithlessness. So he will punish them. He does this so that they will see that other gods are worthless and they will come back willingly to him, not coerced. The people want a prophet like Moses to lead them. God agrees and promises to send them another prophet who will get four books written about him as well. The book ends saying no other prophet like Moses was in Israel's history. Seeing God face to face, performing miracles and wonders for Israel and showing up Israel's enemies. So who will replace Moses? A man named Yeshua, son of Nun. Another Yeshua of Nazareth even more truly completes Moses' mission. Only we've been led not from death to life or from slavery to freedom through the Red Sea or the Jordan River, but rather through our baptism into Christ. We are not led by God's presence abiding on the tabernacle, rather God tabernacles with us in Emmanuel. God speaks to us through Jesus rather than Moses. Our leader has died like Moses, but Christ has risen. God's New Testament plan was accomplished by destroying wickedness, death itself, and the devil through the cross and the resurrection of all flesh. Repentance and the gospel are now what we are committed to as we seek to spread the gospel.